and I'm going to cover some more, uh, more Firebase as usual. This time I got a request in the comments to cover uh, storage security rules. They're pretty simple. There's not a whole lot to cover. I'm just going to go over some written material that I have. There's not a lot to really type out or demo. So we're just going to go over it really quickly. The, the rules are pretty straightforward. Okay. So first, go over to your console. You want to go to storage, then over here to rules. And you'll, you'll notice you get this simple little system here. Now, it's not JSON like your security rules. It's a little different. One of these blocks. And it looks to me, and I'm just... I just suspect that the Firebase team has plans to expand how they handle security rules. And so this seems to be a little more of a flexible system than the JSON system they have. They had in Legacy that they have still for Firebase 3.0. I suspect we're going to move more toward a, a system like this in the future. Okay, so service, Firebase.storage. You can imagine it being Firebase.database or Firebase.something else. Uh, more flexible this way. Okay, so the service is Firebase.storage and match slash b slash your your bucket name slash o all right so all this right here is just is just boilerplate now here we get into the fun part so we get to, we get to write these match blocks and now the matches the match blocks are really similar to what you have with your regular security rules except we're using curly braces and we have this little thing here where we can match all paths. Um, with, so we can, okay, let's, let's take, a, take a quick step back. Okay, so let's look over here at, at this text I've got here. Okay, you have access within these security rules to the user's UID via request.auth.uid. You do not have access to the rest of the real-time database. That is the main difference between the storage rules and your real-time database rules. Now, if you create a custom auth token, I'm sure you'll have access to the rest of that. I haven't tried it, but that would make sense to me. Okay, so the syntax is a little bit different. Your first two blocks, service firebase.storage, and your match first match block are boilerplate. Okay. Next, so you're gonna you're gonna basically secure different folders. And you're going to do it by matching them with slashes, uh, folder names, and then wildcards. So you wildcard just like you wildcarded before, but in this case we're doing, I mean, it's going to look like this, a little bit different. So I like to use this sort of user-readable, writable own system. So all paths, first we're going to match all paths. Now this is a wild card, but because we're saying equals star star, it'll match all child paths. It'll go all the way to the end because with Firebase security, with uh, storage rules, we have to match all the way down to the file name itself. We can't just, the, the, these rules aren't gonna necessarily apply um, based just at the folder level. We have to match them all the way down to the file name. So to do that, they've given us this sort of um, star glob kind of pattern wildcard addition. So all paths, we can then do equal star star, and that'll match all the paths all the way down. So I'm going to allow read. Instead of our earlier syntax, now it's just these two rules, allow read or allow write. Now I could just put a uh, colon right there, like you'll see down here, and just say, just allow the read. Or I can put in some sort of JavaScript-y stuff. So if request.auth.uid equals equals the auth UID for my admin user, then that admin user can go to town and read and write the whole the whole bucket. Otherwise, um, use readable. So wildcard to the folder, wildcard to the UID, wildcard the file name. Allow read if request.auth.uid equals the UID. It's pretty straightforward. You have access to your wildcard variables in your rule. So I have access to file name, I have access to UID, I have access to folder. But I'm wildcarding at the folder level and the UID level and the file name level. So that would be like a user readable rule. Now user writable rule would be folder UID file name, wildcard the same as before, allow write if request.auth.uid is UID. Uh, and now here I've got something else. I'm going to say and resource.metadata.size is less than five times 
1024. So I have access to resource.metadata. So all that metadata that we had from um, earlier video on storage, and you can look at the docs to get all the detail. They're like, there's a bunch of different metadata. I think you can even set your own metadata when you write it. Um, you could probably get really fancy with this because you know you could set you could set um, metadata custom metadata and you could do it for so like pass up a little bit of data about who the user is that's uploading it and get a little more detailed um, like are they an admin or whatever you could get more fancy with that okay but yeah so you've got these sort of JavaScript logic rules right here. So you can go off the UID, you can go off the metadata, allow, allow the write. And now here for user own, I'm doing allow the read and allow the write with that same uh, metadata. The size has got to be less than basically five megs. All right. Then I made a Dropbox. Any file name will allow read. I can just put whatever I want in it and any file name within Dropbox can be read. Of course, it's not going to match folders within Dropbox, just file names. Okay, so let's just go over... Let's go over the basics. Okay, so you use this match slash pattern to add security to different parts of your folder structure. You add wildcards with curlies, curly braces on wildcard path. Now you make a wildcard path to, a to apply to all child paths with stars. So admin slash some wildcard equals star star. All right, wildcard path names are available as variables in your rules. Remember to address the entire path all the way down to the file name. There are only two rules, allow read and allow write. Conditions are completely optional. You can just put a little semicolon there at the end of read or a semicolon at the end of write and be done with it. You have access to the auth object. And you have aux, I mean, that's the UID and potentially a token. And you have access to your metadata. Okay, also, one quick little thing. You can nest rule blocks instead of writing them as one-liners. So you see how I wrote these as this is a one-liner, this is a one-liner. Well, this is nested, match, Dropbox, match, file name. So nesting works as before, or you can write these one-liners. I kind of like the one-liners, but whatever. So pretty straightforward, not a lot more to cover. I mean, of course the docs have all the, you know, the nitty gritty, but this is all I really found need to use. So awesome, thanks for listening.